All right, here we are, everybody. My name is Art Burns, and this is the Showing Up to Your Life podcast and YouTube channel. I'm really excited to be here with you today. I'm so proud of myself. I changed up the... (laughs) Up the intro there. <laughs> Not by much, but it's something. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take a little credit for that. It's a little baby steps, as we know. And that's that's kind of what we're talking about today, right? We're talking about taking the next step into our happiness, to take the next step into the depth of happiness towards that that ultimate depth of happiness, which is an un unwavering and 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 endless source of happiness as as Matthew Richard the uh, the the uh, PhD turned uh, uh, Tibetan monk says that it's a deep ocean of happiness that we can always tap into and I'm really excited to be here to talk about this next step or this next level of happiness you know yesterday we talked about that first sort of shallow level of happiness right which is that happiness that we feel just when we feel positive emotions or more positive emotions than negative emotions right and and that that sort of happiness how how it becomes very very fleeting and very sort of unsustainable right because that happiness depends so much on everything else in the world right like if if you know you get stuck in a traffic jam and then you uh, you spill your coffee on your shirt and you, you, you have a bad meeting because of that and, and the day goes on and on and on. It's hard to feel a lot of positive emotions and all of that that's going on, right? And none of those things are things that you asked to happen, right? You didn't ask for the traffic jam. You didn't intentionally spill coffee on yourself. At least I'm assuming you didn't, <laughs> but maybe you did. Uh, but, but the point is that all of these things can happen without our control or without our invitation, but yet they really impact our our happiness or, or stand in the way of our happiness in a very significant way. So therefore, that first level of happiness is not the, you know, it's 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 fickle. You know, and again, it's very shallow. It's very wavering, right? It's very out of our control. And, and as we get deeper and deeper, we start to take more control and, and we start to live in a happiness that is that is more within our control. All right. So before we get into that, though, real quick, an announcement. OK, um, <clears throat> so I have two courses starting. And I want to just let you know about this because they're, the first one is starting this Monday and I still have some spots left. So I just want to make sure that you understand what this is, okay? The course that starts this Monday, April 5th at, um, I think it's at 6.30 p.m. Uh, uh, mountain time. So it'll be 8.30 p.m. in the East Coast, uh, 5.30 p.m. on the West Coast. And what this is, is the introduction to mindfulness, okay? So basically, Sorry, everybody, I have a little tickle in my throat. <clears throat> Basically, you know, if you've never practiced before, if, you, if you've if you only heard of mindfulness, maybe you've read a couple of books, maybe you have done a little bit of practicing, but, but you really don't have a, a foundation, right? So it can be literally from absolutely zero experience to, to kind of some experience, but wanting to sort of brush up on the basics, right? That's this course, okay? It's going to be a six-week course, and it's going to give you everything you need to, to establish or to, um, <clears throat> or to deepen your current uh, mindfulness practice, either establish a new practice or deepen your current practice. Okay. And it's going to be a six week, very basic course. Okay. Um, I will give you everything you need. You don't have to go out and buy anything. You don't have to go out and uh, get anything for this. <laughs> it's just show up every Monday and just listen to what I'm saying. And then and then I'm going to give you practices, right? Because as you know from listening to this podcast, you know, practice is essential to mindfulness. So, so that's what that practice, that That's what that program is. Now, there's another program starting the following Sunday, which I might push that one back because I haven't really gotten everything. So it's either next Sunday or maybe the Sunday after. We'll see what happens. Um, That course is going to be about what we're talking about here is happiness, right? I'm going to take you through an eight-week course to to teach you how to develop the skill of happiness. Now, there's a lot of different practices in this, but it's not going to be just a basic mindfulness practice. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff, okay? It's going to be, we're going to do laugh yoga. Have you ever heard of laugh yoga? (laughs) If you've never tried laugh yoga, Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do um, uh, a lot of other different really cool practices. It's going to, yes, there will be some meditation involved. There will be some basic mindfulness practices, but there's also going to be a ton of fun stuff. Um that is going to start uh, the week after uh, this one, right? So that's slated to start on the 11th. But again, depending on the signups and stuff, I, I might wind up pushing that back a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. Um 
Both of these courses are going to be held in Zoom. Um, both of them are uh, group courses, which is really cool because as I just talked about in my Learning to Surf podcast with my buddy Adam Asdell, you know, a lot of times when we're when we're in a, uh, the beginning, the early stages of a mindfulness practice, right, or whatever practice we're doing, you know, uh, we there, there's a certain inherent risk, right, at talking about your practice with other people, right, specifically, you know, maybe your family members or, or friends. Or, or other, you know, if you go to a yoga class and you say, oh, yeah, I, I did, you know, five minutes of meditation yesterday and it felt great, you know, somebody might say to you, well, <laughs> only five minutes, I do an hour every day, right? And it can be, become discouraging, right? And, and likewise, like if you, you know, like Adam just told the story to me um, that, you know, that, that like, you know, even people in your life, right, and this happens to me too, that like, you know, if you, if you find yourself in a moment of not being so mindful, you know, all your friends and family are going to call you out on it, right? And say, you see, you're not being mindful right now, you know. Um, And so so the purpose of having a group, right, is that the group becomes this safe place to be able to talk about your mindfulness, uh, you know, journey and growth. And you're talking about it among people who are not only at the same level as you, but they have an interest in your support and your success. So they're going to be more supportive, more kind, more compassionate. And you're going to learn from each other. Right, so there's lots and lots of benefits to to learning these things in a group setting, and so each of these groups is going to be about ten people. Uh, like I said, there's a few spots open for each of them. Um, let me know, okay, if you have any questions about this or want to try to decide which one's right for you. You know, there's different budgets for each. The the six week course is um is uh you know right now what we're doing is a, a donation, so this is a suggested donation of twenty dollars a week, or you pay all at once and it's a uh, hundred dollars, so you save twenty bucks, right? Uh, the the eight week course is a little more in depth, it's a little more intense. Uh, the price on that is seven hundred and fifty dollars for the eight weeks roughly the same, you know, not, not much different from each other. Um, but that's, you know, so if, if you want any, if you have any questions about any of this, I'm just, I'm dying to get people in here so I can help you to, um, to, to, to understand these, these concepts and these practices on a deeper level, right? Deeper than I'm telling you about in these podcasts and, and in a way that is going to really impact your life in a very, very powerful way as it has for me and as it has for many, many clients who I've watched over the, over the years. And, and it's really exciting for all of us. So, um, so even if you're curious, I, I encourage you to drop a, I'm going to drop the link in the, uh, description here to, to book a phone call with me. Okay. The phone call costs you nothing. Okay. I cover the cost. You just put in your name, your email address and pick a date and, uh, and I'll take you from there. And then whatever questions you have, whatever concerns you have, whatever, um, <laughs> you know, uh, desires you have, that's what we'll talk about. And we'll, and we'll see how, uh, which program is best for you. Okay. And, uh, and again, there's room in both of them for right now. So, so let's, you know, if, if you're interested, if it even sounds curious, book a call with me and let's get into a conversation. Okay. All right. So on to happiness, shall we? <laughs> so, you know, again, this is like my favorite subject, right? Because who doesn't love talking about happiness, right? Because ultimately, as I said a moment ago, um, I think I said a moment ago, this is my third take on this video. So it might've been <laughs> in one of the, uh, the outtakes here. Um, but, <laughs> but happiness is our default state. I said it and I mean it, right? You know, it's, it's when we feel, um, you know, well, look, look at a child, right? (laughs) And I mean, I've spent a lot of time around children. Uh, I have two children of my own who are now 12 and nine. So I've lived through the years of watching them just be happy, right? Like, like if you have a kid at the park, right? If nobody's doing something to cause that kid distress, right? Or cause the kid pain, like nobody's pushing her or him or hitting him or her or taking their stuff or not sharing, you know, if everything's just kind of, you know, in its natural state in the, in the playground, right? And the kids had enough to eat and it had enough sleep. Well, then it's going to be happy, right? So it's only when there's, there's something missing, right? Where there's not enough food or, or there's not enough sleep, right? That's going to create an unhappiness, right? Um, or, you know, again, another kid pushing them or, or taking their toys or not sharing toys or something like that. That is also going to cause unhappiness. But that is the same thing that we deal with in terms of our stress, right? Like, like when things are not going well, as I described before, right? You, you got a flat tire, you have to fix that, you know, you 
get on the highway. Now you're late. Now you're stuck in traffic. You spill your coffee on your shirt. You know, there's no good songs on the radio and you're having a horrible day, right? Well, the, the unhappiness that you're feeling is coming from all of those things that are causing you to, to, to lose sight of your happiness, right? It's not that you are happy only if you, have, you don't have a flat tire or only if you don't spill your coffee on you or only if your favorite songs are playing on the radio, right? It's, it's, it's the opposite, right? And in fact, when just like, just like children, if, if we are in a place where everything is okay, right? Like everything is, is, is satisfactory, right? We've had enough sleep. We've had enough to eat. Nobody's causing us distress on any levels. Nobody's, you know, bothering us on some kind of level. Well, then we're going to naturally be happy. But the problem is that most of us don't ever get to that point because we're so worried about things and we're so stressed about things and we're so, you know, kind of clinging, like, I need to get this new thing. I need to get a new job. I need to get a, a spouse or a house or a car or whatever it is, right? That, that, that's, that, that yearning for that stuff is actually what's getting in the way of your happiness, right? And so, so yesterday we talked about that first sort of shallow level of happiness, right? Where, where it's just about feeling the, the positive emotions more than the negative emotions, right? That, that, that equals happiness, right? And actually this brings us to, uh, Barbara Friedrichsen, right? Does a, a great talk on this, uh, a Ted talk, um, where she talks about the positivity ratio, right? That in order to just feel like, okay, right? Like not, happy, but not depressed, but okay, that generally speaking, people have a one to three ratio in terms of one positive emotion to three negative emotions. And that's considered somebody who is, you know, baseline, right? So not very happy, but also not depressed. Somebody who's depressed is going to be at maybe a, you know, four to one or, or a five to one of negative to positive, um, you know, uh, uh, experiences, right? But the person who is happy is going to flip that scale. The person who is happy is going to to have a, a, a higher level of, you know, it's going to have more of the positive emotions than the negative emotions, right? And so, and so, uh, so, and by the way, I think I worded that, that ratio a little bit um, in a confusing way. So the ratio is that in order, if you have one positive emotion to every three negative emotions, that's where you're feeling, uh, no, my bad. <laughs> if you're having three positive emotions to one negative emotion, that's when you're generally a happy person, right? And so that, that's where the math works out. Pardon me for that. I got myself a little twisted around there. Um, and so, so when it, when it decreases, when it becomes like two to one or one to one, that's when somebody is experiencing depression and, and just like unhappiness, like, like active unhappiness, right? And so, but again, as I described, you know, that level of happiness is very much not within our control. Now, now there are certain things we can do to help it, right? Like we can practice gratitude. We can practice compassion. We can practice, you know, positive emotions in that sense, right? But still, there's only so much control you have over that because you're living life and life is going to throw things at you that are going to be challenging, right? And so this next level of happiness, as we go deeper, we get more sustainable and we get more uh, sort of solid and, 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 you know, like, you know, a grit that we can hold on to in our happiness, right? So this next level is the second of three levels of happiness. And this is, comes from, you know, uh, renowned psychologists, right? This is not me making this stuff up, right? Um, but this next level of happiness is really about, you know, about, about feeling your sense of, of stability in the world, Right. So, so feeling that, you know, it, it's stability in the sense that you feel, number one, that you are, you know, in line with your own sort of integrity or your morals. Right. Like you're living in the way that you feel is right living. Right. <clears throat> That's one aspect of this second level of happiness. Another aspect of this level of happiness is is feeling as though you're on track for the goals that you have in your life, which again relates back to what I just said, right? Like you have this sort of vision of who you want to be, right? And what you want to be in this world and how you want to impact the world, right? 
So, so that second level of happiness really concerns how well you feel that you are aligned with that, right? How feel, how well you feel that you're, you're on pace for your goals, uh, how well you feel like you are in, you know, resonant with your integrity and your, your moral values, right? But here's the thing, a lot of times when, when we talk about this, right, it, it can start to sound like, well, then only people who are, you know, or on, on pace for their goals are going to be happy. So that means that when you're, you know, when you're five years old and you create the goal that I want to be a fireman, right? So that, by that logic, then it sounds like, only firemen are happy, right? And, you know, but of course that's not true, right? And so, so with this level of happiness, and, and especially how this relates back to mindfulness, is that this level of happiness relies on a flexibility, right? And, and, a, and a, 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 an ability to, um, to be open, to, to circumstances or to, um, to, uh, uh, you know, different, you know, changes in life perspective. So in other words, you know, it's not so much about being true to you or on pace with the goals that you set a long time ago, but it's much more about having the flexibility to, to change those goals as your life unfolds. Right. And so what that means is, you know, let's say, you know, you, you decided when you were, you know, 17 years old that you wanted to be a lawyer. Right. And, and so you, you know, you apply to all schools that would, you know, have good law programs that you'd be able to graduate, undergraduate, go into the law program. You know, you did all that stuff. Stuff. You know, maybe you interned at a law firm, uh, you know, maybe your uncle works for a law firm and you, you got a summer job there, just immerse yourself in it, right? You're, you're really feeling like, this is for me, this is what I want to do, right? But then along the way, in your fifth year of school or something like that, you realize that, you know, or maybe even after you graduate and you go into a law firm and you realize you have to work like 100 hours a week, you know, now maybe you realize that, well, you know what, I didn't want to be a lawyer that much. You know, it's not like, like what I thought being a lawyer was is not what I'm realizing being a lawyer is, right? So, so the unhappy person right? Feels despair in that situation, right? Like, oh no, now I've spent all this time, you know, uh, you know, investing all my time and my money into being a lawyer. And now I'm a lawyer and I hate it and I'm miserable. And now I'm going to be miserable for the rest of my life, right? And so that's where this second level of happiness comes in, right? The second level of happiness is the, is the ability to see and to, to, to view the landscape of your life and say, <clears throat> you know what? I have to adjust my goals because, you know, because I always thought that being a lawyer was going to be the thing that made me happy, but I'm realizing that in order to become a lawyer, it's asking too high a price, right? It's making me too unhappy to go through the process of becoming a lawyer. And so therefore, I'm going to readjust my goals, right? And instead of being a lawyer, I'm going to be a, a community activist or community organizer, or, or I want to be, you know, like, like, what was it about being a lawyer that was so attractive to me? Let me figure out how to do something like that without actually being a lawyer. Now, that is how we maintain our second level of happiness, right? So if you decide that, okay, well, I wanted to be a lawyer so that I could help people who were, who were having, you know, who are in trouble, right? I could be the person who's in the defense of a of somebody who's been wrongly accused and I can help them, right? Or something like that, right? And so, so an alternative to that could be something like, you know, community counseling and talking to young kids who, who might find themselves in, 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 you know, law, you know, uh, experiences with law enforcement and telling them how to do things in such a way that's going to mitigate the, the problems that they're going to have. You know, of course, I'm just, this is coming off the top of my head, right? But that's something now that you can do without going to the schooling. You can do without all that grueling stuff that was that was you know driving you away from being a lawyer right <clears throat> so so therefore you know the core goal that you had was still to help people right but you're finding a new way to do that that fits with you and it doesn't cause you to suffer in a way that you don't feel is worth suffering right? Now, some people might be different, right? Some people might say, well, I know it's going to be hard and it's miserable and I hate the law school. I hate the hundred hours a week I have to work. I hate all this stuff, but it's that important to me to become the lawyer. So I'm going to be able to accept all this difficulty for the next three, four or five years or whatever. And then I'm going to be able to do those things that I always dreamed of doing, right? Now that 
is somebody who can be happy also because they still feel that they're on pace for those goals. Right. So it's not that, you know, it's not that you have to uh, give up on things. Right. And it's not that you have to, you know, torture yourself either. It's there's a middle ground. Right. There's a third way to look at that. Right. And that third way is either accepting the difficulty that it that it requires to get to that point or readjusting the goal and just just modifying it to be something that is more attainable to you in a way that is more comfortable and more, uh, you know, more acceptable for you. Right. So this second, this second uh, aspect of uh, the second depth or level of, of happiness is really about flexibility. You know, it's really about being open and, 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 you know, sort of, um, you know, flexible. And, and that is a sign of, of, of psychiatric and, and mental well-being, emotional well-being as well. Um, something we've talked about here quite a bit is, you know, the, as uh, Dan, Dr. Dan Siegel calls it, the river of well-being, right? Like when you're feeling good, when you're feeling happy and you're feeling well, right? You have this combination of, you know, you feel very grounded in your life, right? Like this second level of happiness, right? You feel grounded and you feel, you know, on pace. You feel like your your place in the world makes sense and you're on pace to do those things that you've set yourself out to do. But yet, you're flexible, right? And that's that river of well-being. If you remember, you know, on one side of the river, which represents the two uh, hemispheres of the brain, on the left side of the river is rigidity, right? The, the unwillingness to change. That is unhappiness. That is unwellness. And on the right side of it is chaos, right? Which is also, you know, kind of speaks to what we're talking about here too. Because if you don't have goals, if you don't have a, a sense of who you want to be in this world or, or how you fit in, well, then that's chaotic. And that just really has no foundation at all. And that also is going to be a person who is not experiencing happiness, right? And, and so... And so, so this really does come down to a lot of, you know, not only flexibility, but also uh, uh, an openness and, and a willingness to, 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 you know, to, to examine our lives, right? Like that's, that's the key, right? I think Plato was the one who said that, um, that a li an unexamined life is not worth living, right? And so that, again, that, that speaks to happiness, right? That's what he was talking about in my view, that, that what he meant is that you're going to be miserable for, the, for your whole life if you're not examining your life. And what that means is, again, the ability to see how, where am I in this world? Where do I fit in? Where do I belong? Where do I want to be in this world? Right. And, and, and how do I, how do I do this world in, in a way that, that makes sense to me? right? That's happiness. That's that next level of happiness, right? And again, a lot of people just don't ever even pay attention, right? A lot of people feel like, well, I just want to make as much money as I possibly can. And so I'm going to go into this job that's going to make me the most money of any job that I can think of, you know, that I can see is available to me. And I'm going to work myself to death just making a lot of money. And I don't care. Right. Because I'll have a fancy house, a fancy car and all this stuff. Right. Those people are never really going to be. Well, not never. They're going to experience flashes of, of that first level of happiness. Right. So when things are going well for them and, and that's the thing that that's that's where that that notion comes in, that if I have enough money, you know, that's what uh, Tony Shea, who's rest in peace, he just recently passed away. But the uh, one of the founders of Z Zappos, Zappos, uh, the food, the uh, not food, but the shoe uh, online shoe uh, merchandise or retailer, um, you know, he he calls that first level of happiness rock star happiness. Right. But where, you know, if you have enough money, <laughs> right, you can just make sure that everything goes well for you all the time and that you're always feeling happiness. Right. Like you can make sure like, oh, I want that car. Let me go buy that car right now, slap a, a platinum car or a black card or whatever on the counter, and just buy the car right out. I can do that because I got millions of dollars, right? Um, you know, I don't have to go out to a restaurant. I can just hire my own chef, right? Or, or I can just, you know, I have a barista at my house, so I don't have to go to Starbucks and hope that they make my drink right, right? So, of course, that's not a life that most of us can live, right? And so, and so, you know, so, so the thing is that I think that's where people get this idea, though, that that you know, that somehow 
they can, you know, if they make enough money, they can, they can buy their happiness in that way, right? Like just by, by, by just buying the circumstances that, that create more positive, uh, positive emotions than negative emotions, right? That's what they're talking about. But the thing is, once we get into these deeper levels, that's not going to be there for them. So, so, so even though they have all this stuff and even though they're experiencing more positive emotions than negative emotions, at a certain point, there's going to be an emptiness there, right? And that emptiness is where it's going to be, um, you know, that's where the suffering is going to start. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't still attain this second level. And, may, and, and, and it also doesn't mean that, that if you're rich, you can't have all three, right? You can, right? The, the, the next level down is about having purpose and meaning in your life. So, so someone who's a rock star could have all three of these things, right? A rock star could have more uh, happy moments than, than not happy moments, just because, again, they can buy whatever they need. So there's no nothing to ever make them unhappy, right? Um, and then they can feel like, yeah, I'm on pace with my goals. I'm playing to, you know, 80,000 seat arenas and, you know, it's, it's going great, you know, no problem. And then they can think of how they're impacting the lives of their listeners and that's something bigger than them so it's not to say that you can't be a rock star you can't be a millionaire and not have all three levels of these happiness right the point is though that you don't have to be a millionaire or a rock star to attain all three levels of this happiness all right and so i hope that i hope that makes sense and i hope i've explained this sufficiently uh, but if you have any questions i welcome you to reach out and ask me because because happiness is something again it's our natural state right and if we just figure out just a couple of simple things that we can do to put us in this place of 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 experiencing our happiness on a deep and sustainable way well, then we will always be happy. And that's, and that's one of the things that comes with mindfulness, right? Is that, is that you know, you, you get this sense that, number one, I can always conjure up a positive emotion, right? Which I can. I can always conjure up compassion or gratitude. Even in difficult situations, even when stuff is going really badly, I can still do that, right? I also feel that I'm very much on pace with with my goals because then your goals change a little bit, right? When you start practicing mindfulness, you start reprioritizing things and then your goals become much more attainable at that point, right? Because you're not you're not chasing these false goals, you're you're chasing real goals, right? And then knowing that I can walk my life in in the that third level of happiness which we're going to talk about tomorrow which is having a positive impact on the world which is bigger than myself that's the meaning that's the purpose right and so so one thing that i realized after practicing mindfulness for a pretty short time actually like maybe a year or so um i found myself that i was just happy and there was no reason for my happiness. It wasn't because something went well. It wasn't because somebody said something nice. It wasn't because I got something new. I just felt happy. And again, the reason for that is because there was nothing taking my happiness away. Right. And that's what we're talking about. Right. When we have this this ability to, to conjure up positive emotions, nobody can take that away from us. Right. There's no circumstances that can truly take that away. Yes, we'll feel something other than happiness for periods of time, but we'll always be able to come back. Right. And when we have that second level of happiness, right, we're in control of it, right, because we can always accept and redefine our goals. Right. We have full control over that. Right. And then, of course, that third level of happiness, which is the most stable and, and unyielding happiness that you, you can possibly have. You know, all of us who practice mindfulness have that because we understand how practicing this is impacting the rest of the world, which is something that is a great purpose. Right. And so and so that's why I named this course that's starting next week on April 11th, How to Be Happy for No Reason. And so I hope you enjoyed this podcast today, this video today. I hope it makes sense to you. If you have any questions or anything was not clear, please reach out to me, okay? Because this is the key, right? Because when you can walk through your life with this unyielding, sustainable happiness, well, then again, even when the bad stuff happens and even really bad stuff, it's always very temporary and you're always going to be able to, to, to dwell back into that, that depth, that ocean of happiness that lies within you.
All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I wish you well. Uh, be back again tomorrow. If you're around tonight, if you're listening to this early enough, uh, we do our weekly uh, sit, our weekly group meditation and discussion happens at uh, 6 30 uh <laughs> mountain time in uh on on zoom or, or through meetup rather uh so i'll put the link to that in the description if you're looking to join that you just have to register through meetup and then you'll get all the uh information all the links that you need and you can just show up there's no cost to that at all we do we do accept donations but uh there's no requirement all right so if you're around tonight that's happening all right everybody thanks for listening i'll be back again tomorrow take care